Every day I'm shuffling. This episode of the Coin Spice Podcast is brought to you by Cash Shuffle. Because what you do with your money is your business. To give this new product a try for fungibility and privacy, head on over to electroncash.org, download their latest wallet 4.0.0, and give it a spin. Cashshuffle.com for more information because what you do with your money is your business. What is really going on, Crypto Savages? You are listening to the CoinSpice Podcast with host C. Edward Kelso, editor-in-chief at CoinSpice.io, your home for spicy crypto things on the net. What is really going on, Crypto Savages? This is your host, C. Edward Kelso, editor-in-chief out at CoinSpice.io, back with another episode of the CoinSpice Podcast. And this time around, I've got Ben Munster. He's a writer over at Decrypt. And he has written what, for my money, is one of the best essays ever, ever, ever published in the crypto space. It's called The Inside Story of Spank Chain. And Spank Chain, as you may know or may not know and can probably already divine, uh, is that connection between crypto and pornography, the, the, the porn industry. And I realize this has been done to death. Um, it is just one of these subjects that continues to reemerge and it's never done well uh, it's always silly there's always some bimbo on the cover um, or as a featured image and it just you know it just never ends up going anywhere Ben Munster's the inside story of spank chain is not that it is a long read it is profound it is funny it is insightful you get a real sense of the characters uh, there's an arc to the story um, he has he leaves you in suspense in some places it's just a fantastic it's exactly what crypto needs uh, to give it some heft and breath and depth um, in any case I had a chance to to grab him uh, I'll be honest with you I don't think he really wanted to be on the podcast and I think he was even less thrilled that it was coin spice uh, but to his credit after I bugged him a few times he just sort of gave in and was like all right, all right I'll just do it um, he is on a phone all the way in England, and I'm in the United States in the uh, in the Southern California area. So there's a bit of a delay, and I step on him a couple times uh, during the conversation. But other than that, I think it's uh, it's it's a, a really fun episode, and you're going to learn a ton from Ben and about Ben, and you're, you're going to instantly become a fan. So without any further ado, here is Ben Munster. I'm sensing some early Hitchens. Uh, some flavors of uh, of maybe some Gonzo <laughs> journalism of uh, yeah, of Hunter S. Thompson. Do, do have any of these guys uh, in, influenced you uh, at at all? I never read Hitchens. Uh, I actually really? I actually was desperately reading Hunter S. Thompson while I was writing that piece, ah. but I never read him before. I was reading uh, what was it? The Kentucky Derby piece. So that's so, why I kind of use the word degenerate and reprehensible wow. braved quite a lot because I've just got. I just had kind of that that piece running through my mind. Yeah, it's 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 a, you're channeling him for sure, uh, Hunter S. Thompson in this. Um, all right, so you so kind of take us through it then. This uh, what has been passed around all over crypto Twitter, and I think it's going to make its way uh, if it hasn't already outside of our our bubble here. Um, so take us how like what's what's the impetus? I mean, you know, besides sex and you know all that good stuff. What what is the emphasis to even to even consider uh, a project like Spank Chain? And I'll I'll tell you my own little connection to it. But go ahead. Um, it's 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 basically it's it's from from our perspective, we we'd seen so much like shit. It, it it seemed like on on one hand, it's this kind of like it's just, it's a porn site, and that's that's interesting. But it's 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 the fact that at the same time, it seemed to be an almost almost ironically, the, the only, one of the only apps that actually generated anything meaningful. It actually delivered on the promise of, um, to an extent, on the promise of kind of decentralized, democratized uh, banking, I guess. It actually unbanked <laughs> banked people. Like there are very few things that, I mean, people talk all the time about banking the unbanked, but I don't hear much about, I mean, you do hear about Venezuelans and people like that, but you don't hear about on the global scale people in Africa, for instance, using right. blocked for. I mean, mainly they're using stuff like M-Pesa, right? The, exactly, uh, exactly. 
and banking app that they use. Um, and this this actually seemed like it, it actually made sense, it, which is which is rare. It made sense. Yeah, there there is kind of an, an internal logic to it, and um, I'm such an adult. I'm such a uh, you know, it's it's one of these things where it, I I passed up the chance. I got an early email. I was at the news desk out at uh, Bitcoin.com back then, and I got an early email. Uh, it might have actually been from from Amin. Um, I, you know, I I don't remember, uh, but I did get an yeah. email. Uh, uh, you know, say hey, you know, we're open to you can talk with anybody you want to. You know, come kick the doors in, come talk to us, whatever. And I said, this is you know, this is fucking stupid. This is dumb. Here we are back again at the uh, the dumb uh, um, what do you call it uh, a porn thing again. Um, everybody was covering. Right, it's just another stupid ICO, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, exactly. The exactly. Sure. And then Spank Chain, I, I, I totally blew it off. I just, I just, I, I, I actually might have even fought uh, an editor too, who uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't trust my memory. Um, but uh, I think they push. Maybe check this out. You know, can we be done with the porn thing already? Like, I get it; it gets clicks and whatever. But let's, let's, you know, moving on. There's, like, like you say, there's. These 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 gravitas subjects to talk about, uh, at least seemingly, uh, whether it's in Africa or Venezuela or wherever. Um, you know, I'm a serious journalist, and I want to go and do this sort of stuff. Um, so I totally passed on it, which was a giant mistake. Um, I think um, I think you you go into it with some whimsy, and you're 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 constantly, you know, winking back at the reader, like we all know what this is about. But there's some real there there, right? Like they've they've actually they, they've hit on something right absolutely and uh can you can you get into how you um how you link into uh is is i i'm, I'm gonna butcher his name is it amin Soleimani? i think so yeah okay i never actually said his name fully out loud so you'll get <laughs> to, to be honest okay uh so he becomes kind of a focal point uh can you tell us a little bit about him and and uh, his his uh his his involvement in all this yeah, um, I like him. Um, no, he's uh, he's an interesting character. He's a, he's kind of a contrarian. Um, I don't know if you've seen he 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 frequently he frequently uh, retweets people insulting him. Basically, so one one of the funniest comments on um, my article was someone said, "This is disgusting. Like uh, this is exploiting women. Uh, educational resources can be mu- un- and." Just resources generally can be much spent better elsewhere on, on, on actual programs for empowering women and stuff like that. And he just he just retweeted it with the comment, "You're disgusting." <laughs> <laughs> so that that's actually it's, a nice vignette. It's kind of fun. I, I called him yeah. a degenerate gamma, and he retweeted that as well. Like, oh, that's great. And so, uh, so tell us about this guy. Uh, th- that's actually a pretty good uh, uh, encapsulation of him. Um, yeah. He actually starts out as something of a of, of a wunderkind in uh, in Brooklyn uh, with Joe Lubin and the Consensus Hipsters. Um, how right. how does how does that all come about? Look, he'd probably be better positioned to describe it than I would. But the the sense I got was he was yeah he was this kind of child prodigy. Well, I don't even know if he was a child prodigy. He was he was just well liked to Consensus, but he had this what Lubin called a dark presence. I think he. He was kind of he always he was always at a kind of slight angle to the universe. Like he um he he, he was he was always somewhat on the periphery, always kind of concocting sort sort of schemes to undermine the whole thing. And but but he he seems to he he does it out of a kind of this, this mad this, this mad belief that society faces this sort of. Uh, potentially catastrophic coordination failure. That's basically the thing that's plagued mankind uh, for all time. So, so his, his, his idea, his, his obsession is to basically resolve this. And he didn't think that consensus was basically, he didn't think consensus was doing enough. He thought consensus was, was a great company, but he thought that it was maybe starting a few kind of stratospheres too, too high, that it should start lower. It should start. So he, he has a there's a diagram in his presentation which he presented to consensus, which basically kind of uh, kind of describes the natural progression of technology. I think it starts at drugs, then it goes to porn, then it goes to gaming, then it goes to everything else. And he he obviously Silk Road covered drugs, so he felt that the next logical step was porn, but consensus had all these kind of uh, 
lofty ideals about immediately democratizing finance for the entire world, you know, unbanking the unbanked. And I think they're all, they're all like, they all have merit. But I suppose he wanted to take a kind of realist view and think that what do people actually want? They can now get drugs and Bitcoin massively scaled because of that, at least scaled in terms of usership. And the next thing that people want after that is porn. Like, yeah, and there's there's a case to be made um, for the the sex worker. So the 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 analogy to that is that the the internet and advances in video tech and that yeah. that sort of two way streaming tech, uh, you know, I guess in a sense took a lot of sex workers off the street, quote unquote, and put them into safer confines, at least uh, physically, where you know, they're, you know, they have a little bit more control over that environment and, and at least is, again, theoretically safer. And then, unfortunately, it, it kind of led for these guys and gals uh, to be more or less beholden in, in a different way to kind of a new pimp, if you would, uh, a new pusher who who's, is taking the, the, the bulk of their earnings. And, um, man, there, there is a fantastic quote that you were able to pull out of uh, this gal. Uh, about bankers can do you, do you know what i'm getting at is that the one where she said um these people they close women's bank accounts and they go home and jack off to the accounts who they just closed it's it, i mean i just is i almost fell out of my chair i was just like <laughs> there it is i mean there <laughs> it is right so that is crypto in I, I just can't think of a better explanation for it. and you can you can you know draw this out you know beyond just her her rather uh, simple but profound analogy to really every other part of society, but there it is. So these these sex workers move to cams, and again, they're 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 safer, you know, comparatively to that. But then they're they're being jacked for all their money. So how does how does spank chain, you know, address that and and become sort of a a, a use case in the way that Amin was talking about uh, in terms of crypto's evolution? Right, so I guess I guess building on what you said, yeah, that they're, they're no longer they're no longer kind of confined to to working in person with these people, but now they're laboring under a system which is basically completely centralized. I mean, you've got like three major sites that these people depend on, um, and then I suppose, and those three major sites are also beholden to the even fewer major payments providers like PayPal, and then the banks themselves kind of sit at the top of that. And that obviously constrains them completely. So I guess uh, Spank Chain is just, it, it, it exists on the outside of those things. And they're, they're able to keep substantially more of their money. So, so the, the, the trade-off then is, is a cam girl or cam guy or, or in, in essence, sex worker um, could go to a company like Spank Chain and... Hey, Crypto Savages, this is C. Edward Kelso breaking in with a quick and very shameless plug. Coinspice.io is a feisty pirate ship. We depend, rely on almost entirely organic growth, which means our audience really does the marketing for us, and there's nothing more powerful than word of mouth. If you read an article you like on Coinspice.io, if you listen to a podcast and you enjoy the content, or if you're just pissed, please <laughs> promote us on social media, wherever you're at, wherever that is, whether it's Reddit, whether it's uh, YouTube, uh, the Telegram, uh, you know, you name it, the Twitter, like us, retweet, all that great stuff. You can always find detailed show notes for every podcast on the corresponding page at coinspice.io. There you'll find links to our respective podcast, your favorite platform like iTunes. Please give us a, a, a rating. Please give us a subscribe. You know all that good stuff. It helps the pirate ship remain afloat. It keeps us going. We appreciate it. As always, you can contact me personally if you have questions, concerns, you want to hear from a particular guest, you have a news tip at Kelso, K-E-L-S as in Sam O, at Coinspice.io. Thanks again for listening. We sure do appreciate it. And back to the episode. You know, the, the, the trade-off is that, at, at least at first, they don't have quite the distribution and namesake that, say, a, a banked back back to a site may have um so it's it's a little harder to find at least at first 
but the upside is that they get to keep substantially more of, of what they're earning, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, essentially. Um, and you, uh, uh, there's another great line in, in that uh, where you talk about them uh, being able to pocket more and, and, and keep it in their trousers, um, which I laughed out loud at. Um, so you, you actually, you, like you say, you're based in London. You fly, you know, a, basically <laughs> across the pond, as it were, 5,000 miles. Uh, you actually go to San Francisco and you actually meet these people, right? LA, LA, but yeah. Sorry, LA, LA. I got San Francisco on the brain. Um, right. You, you went to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And, and what, just a little bit of, of the flavor there. Uh, what what kind of struck you at first about the the setup about Los Angeles or just the the was, was that actually your first time in in LA? Uh, I think I've been there about twelve years ago. Oh, so, okay. so maybe my, not. My, yeah. So I mean, I didn't. So I'm twenty three. So I didn't. I didn't. Um, I wasn't aware of the you know the nightlife. I'd seen Santa Monica Beach from about six miles away. Uh, the, the LA, the LA in my mind was kind of just this this dirty shithole, and then and then and then Universal Studios kind of gleaming in the center of it, but it's also <laughs> incredibly fake in its own right. Um, and I kind of I kind of uh, think my second time corresponded with that. It, <laughs> it, it it's a it's a weird place. It's um it's kind of it's, it's kind of there's a lot going on, but at the same time it felt felt a little empty. And, and it's kind of the perfect place for for spank chain, right? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so you go to the Spank House. There's so many great puns. Uh, the Spank House, and you do what I, you know I, I tell journalists all the time um, to do, which is maybe even unwittingly, you actually experience this, right? You you actually get involved. Yeah, I went on cam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 and uh, you actually wound up meeting some some pretty interesting figures there. Um, you make a little bit of money, and you get to sort of see how it works. Um, you know, taking it for for a test spin. Do you, do you think that that maybe that is the difference between say writing about a subject? You know, looking up on Wikipedia, uh, maybe emailing back and forth from a from a you know a particular project or whatever. Uh, do you think it makes all the difference in the world to actually go out, experience it, and and um, and actually use the product? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, imagine if I just emailed Soleimani. I mean, I wouldn't have got, I, I would have got the kind of the the press release top line at best, really, wouldn't I? Like, it's it, it's just better to actually be there. And I I think I think the fact that I, the fact that I could test it out myself um, really really reflects the kind of uh, the mission statement of the article, which is that we're trying to find something that actually works, and the fact that I was mad at, I was able to make twenty six dollars going there, going there and using it. So, so yeah, on, on on the one side, there's the fact that there's being able to actually use the app, which is a rare thing in cryptocurrency because there's very few apps that work or do anything and actually to earn money on it. But at the same time, yeah, you have the environment, you were able to get to know the people, you're able to kind of see all the weird things they do when they think you're not looking. It, it really does work. I mean, that's, it, did, did you find any, any, any hiccups with it? Did, did you find it to be clunky at all? Or, 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 was, it, or was it more or less as advertised? It, well, yeah. I mean, all, all I did, it's a webcam. They put up a webcam. Um, and I just did my, I did my horrible attempt at seducing all six of my viewers. So. <laughs> and, you know, um, so it, it was really, it was really, it was, it, it was easy to the point of there was nothing I had to do. So there was just an account and I set it up. I mean, I'm not living on this app. I didn't actually, I didn't. Sure, sure. I, I, didn't, do a, I didn't do a full working week on Spank Chain. Maybe that would have been better. Like, so I, I didn't really experience, you know, earning boosty tokens, converting them to dollars. Right. Um, massing followers and all that stuff. <laughs> but that's, but, but you did in fact earn some money on it and, you, and they're actually... Yeah. They're, they're meted out in, you call booty tokens, B-O-O-T-Y tokens, which again, all the puns from Spank Toshi Nakabooty to, to, to booty tokens, just, I mean, it's just a never-ending font of, uh, of, of, of writing subject here. But they actually earn the, yeah. the, the booty token. Um, and so it, it, 
again, it does what it says it's going to do. And it, it doesn't have these lofty goals to change the world and save the world. Uh, they just want to make the experience better for, for everybody involved. Have you, have you had any pushback on the piece? Has, has anybody like criticized you for, for paying so much attention to it? Besides the woman who said it was disgusting, uh, no, actually. Well, I mean, no, I haven't, no, nothing, nothing directed at me. Most directed at Amin, just, I think the same thing he, he just, same thing he gets every day. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty, it's been pretty good, positive, because I've kind of, uh, I've kind of disavowed it myself a little bit, just, just, just from a statistic perspective. I, I just read it and I just see 50 lines that I wish I'd written differently, stuff like that. But yeah, from others' perspective, eh, nah, not really. It's kind of, uh, it's great, man. It, it really, really, really is fantastic. It, it, there's, there's a, a, a really interesting part towards the end there where you talk about his, his general ethos where he, they're actually hacked for something like $30,000. And his response is, is really, really interesting and I think counterintuitive to how most people, uh, especially from the financial side of crypto, think about things. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, that, that part was actually more interesting. We actually had to cut a bit because we couldn't verify it. But um, so, so Wills, the guy, the co-founder, he told me that basically what he did when the hacker, when the hacker made the hack, he, t he told me, and I, I couldn't, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, it lacks credibility, so he didn't include it. But he basically said that he had a contact. He said higher than Trump. Who, <laughs> I mean, I can't even think of anyone higher than Trump. But <laughs> who, who he called, um, who managed to track down this hacker through some digital backend that nobody knows exists, and that's how he was actually able to get the hacker's phone number because it's. That, that's kind of like if, if you read the story that's that that's a glaringly confusing um aspect of it i mean how how do you track down a hacker an anonymous hacker right, i mean right i mean who unless unless you work for the law enforcement you subpoena an exchange or i, I don't know like that's not something that's, that's not something that's, that's easily done or ever done really. it's, it's definitely not it's not easy but it is it is definitely doable if you know the guy who's higher than trump i guess <laughs> Exactly. So, so what, what is, what is, what is Spank Chain's response then to being Spank Chain's response to, to what? To, to being hacked. It's, it's a, it's a very, very unconventional. Um, right. So they, they tell the hacker, um, you can keep all the money you stole or a third of it. If you just tell us what the vulnerability was and he does, and they give it to him. And then he finds another vulnerability where he can, he, 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 he's eyeing up another four grand he's able to steal and they're like all right take it and then we'll give it to you for free and he does and they do that is a so they, they turned him from a, a black hat hacker into a white hat hacker just kind of yes it's, it's, the, it's kind of a means mastery of incentives he's obsessed with incentives all the Moloch stuff. i don't know if you've read meditations on Moloch. I, i'm still struggling I did through because it. of you yeah I, I, you read the whole thing no 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 i i, I read aspects of it but yeah yeah, it's it's a it's an unbelievable way that I try to explain sort of the cypherpunk uh, hacker ethos because it's taken on a pejorative, or as you've separated it now, white hat uh, hacker, a uh, hat hacker rather, and black hat. Um, that these guys are are all about the go of things. They're 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 in in essence engineers or tinkerers, and so they like to know how things work backwards and forwards. And I think a lot of people, especially from traditional finance or just from other aspects of, of society, are so litigious. They're so, you know, we're, we're going to you know, call the cops. We're going to get the courts involved that they, they miss an opportunity to, like you say, bring somebody in perhaps, uh, but also that in a weird way, that hacker was doing them a favor. And this, this, really does cause some cognitive dissonance with, with people who, who read that kind of stuff. But here you have spank chain going, wait a second, you know, I can, you know, clearly I'm, I'm smart enough to track your stupid ass down and find you. So I could, I could definitely make a case to have your ass arrested, but let's, let's not do that. Explain to me how you came about, you know, finding this vulnerability, uh, give me the money back. I'll I'll pay you a what he turns it into a bounty essentially, <laughs> and yeah. and and then they they have they turn on to have a, a another relationship. Now 
I don't know if that has broader implications for the wider world, but it gives you a, a really, it's a, such a wonderful addition to that piece. Uh, it really gives you a sense of, 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 of how this guy thinks and, and uh, why he may be a very, very, very important figure uh, beyond just porn go, going forward. Um, well, I said I was going to keep you on for half an hour, and uh, I've, I've certainly violated that. Um, you've been you've been <laughs> extremely kind. Uh, where can where can people find your work? Just uh, go onto critmedia dot com. Boom, and you're also on Twitter. And look at look at Tim's work as well. For sure, and you have a daily debrief, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've got a I've got a newsletter that goes out um, every day, except every day except the weekends, and you can. Uh, you can sign up for that. It used to appear on the website, but it's now just an exclusive newsletter. Boom. I know. That's awesome. So kind of, yeah. Well, thank you. That was again. good to talk to you. Yeah, same. And, uh, you know, you, you put a lot aside because I, I know you're a super busy guy to do this. So I, I definitely appreciate it. Thanks again, Ben, for, for coming on. Yeah, no worries. Have a good one.